Hey data fans, Reed here. This week I have a follow-up video to the data labeling that I did last week and some of the formatting and design showing the sales, the variance, and the percentage. Now, as you can see in front of us here, I've created something of a grid or like a KPI scorecard to a degree that contains those calculations, but broken out in this case by employee and sales stage. Now, at least as of today, there are no small multiple options for the new card visual yet. That will be coming at some point, I'm sure, but for now, we have an option to actually turn a visual that we have, a native visual, into this using only four measures. So I wanna show you how I did that and have something to be able to use to create a scorecard-like experience in Power BI for now. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start this demo, let's walk through the native visual that I'm actually using to make this. So the visual that I'm using here is actually a 100% stacked bar chart. Now what that does is it gives both the y-axis categorical breakouts, which in this case is a column for employees, and I also on my legend have a sales stage for all of the cards in here. Now what I've done as a way to make sure that my cards on the stacked bar itself are equally spaced is I have a placeholder measure, which in this case is just returning a value of one. So the size and spacing will be identical because the actual size of this container is gonna be returning one each single time in here. Now what I can do with this as well is show these custom data labels in here. So there's a few things that I did to achieve this. Now. To start with, we're going to come open up the format pane in here. And what I want to talk about is the bars initially. So what I did is I actually turned the color all the way to 100% transparency. But then what I did is I turned on the border and ensured that the bar color was matching with the legend color, which goes into some kind of color gradient you'd expect maybe from a sales stage funnel um, from more of uh, cautionary all the way to successful and green but that creates a card border, so to speak, in this. Now, again, you could technically do this with the new card visual, but because there's no breakouts or small multiples available for that, you would need dozens of measures to be able to build this. I only used four in this case. The first one is just the placeholder to create the shapes in the container. Then I made sure to color my legend, the, um, sorry, the bars with all my series. I just gave them the individual colors in here. Once the formatting was done for this, then just like in my previous video I did last week and links to that down below if you're curious or over here uh, in the right. But otherwise, we have three options to show these three labels. We have our title, which is my label one current month sales. Now, if you're looking at these and noticing that the numbers are a little bit off, it's because I'm using a random number generator just to get data on the page. So the variances and percentages aren't going to equal each other, but it gives you an an idea of what this could look like with real world data. So label one is just current month sales. Again, using that pattern that SQL BI has shown in their articles, link down below, which will walk you through just how to do the scaled formatting. So instead of showing the raw number, it's 11.3 million or thousands or billions, depending on what the scale is. That's all this is doing, but it's formatting it as text. And again, mentioning what I also said in the previous video, the reason I'm casting this as a text value is if I applied this under dynamic formatting, I have found that these labels today with the titles and the values and details don't inherit dynamic formatting well. So they need to be cast as text to get them to display properly in information like this. So that's my label one under the title section, my label two, which is the value here. There's label number two. I've increased the font size to highlight this value because I want this to be the prominent value that's displayed and that also has conditional formatting in here, where because this is text in this case, what I'm actually doing is I'm just determining whether or not it starts with a minus or a dollar symbol, which is basically whether or not it's a negative or a positive. Any formatting that works that correctly captures positive and negative is fine, but this lets me color code it for these positive negative um, dual values that I'm wanting to identify. So that conditional formatting is applied there. And then finally, my detail label number three, that is just the month over month percentage at the bottom. And I'm also ensuring in this one that I include either a plus or a minus to indicate that it is a percentage variance related to the value above it. And all three of those are the actual labels themselves with one fourth measure technically that's just needed for the placeholder 
to create the evenly sized cards. Now, someday this won't be needed once the card visual, the new one, has a small multiples option, but this is not a bad solution, and it does resize. If I come up to lock objects, if I change the size here, the cards will move around and resize with this. So it's at least a decent temporary solution for this, and it works well enough to be able to have any one of these that can be highlighted, and these still work as a slicer selection, which is really useful as well. So if I wanted to cross filter other visuals to be able to see Michael Myers and his in information or data related to his closed sales stage, that would work as a slicer. So something that's um, was not too hard to implement and a fun, unique way to turn a bar visual into a card visual. I will be curious to know um, what your thoughts are on this. As always, drop them in the comments down below. If you have any thoughts or suggestions on how you would use this or for any future video, please also throw that into the comments. And as always, don't forget to check out some of our related content here in the upper left. And as always, liking, commenting, and subscribing will continue to help my channel grow. So I will hope to see you on my next video.